Hey everyone, in this video we'll be solving MCQ problems from the chapter Kinematics in the book Pathfinder. So let's begin with question number 16. So in this problem we have been given two students uh, who simultaneously start from the same place on a circular track and they run for two minutes. In this time, one of them completes three revolutions and the other completes four revolutions. So let's say both the boys start from point A. So student one completes three revolutions and student two completes four revolutions in two minutes. It's given that due to thick vegetation in a circular area, as shown in the figure, either of the boys can only see one third of the track. So let's say some bo if a boy was at A, and if I connect this point to the center of the circle, he can only see one third of the track, meaning 360 divided by three, that is 120 degrees of the track. So he can only see the track from A to B. So now the question is, how long during their run do they remain visible to each other? So let's say student S1 and S2 both start from the same point. So what is the angular velocity of the line OS1? It will be three divided by two revolutions per minute. And the angular velocity of the line OS2 is going to be two revolutions per minute. Now, now clearly the, uh, the line OS2 is rotating at a faster rate. So, so basically the student S2, as he is faster, he's gonna overtake the student S1 from the start. So, which means if we write the omega of line two relative to line one, it will be two minus three by two as they're in the same direction, which will be 0 0.5 radians per second. Okay, as we are doing everything relative to one, now, the, now we can imagine the line OS1 to be at rest and the line OS2 is rotating at an angular velocity of 0 0.5 radians per second. So now the question is, okay, so this OS1 is fixed. For how much time can S1 see S2? The answer to that is till the line OS2 crosses the point B. After he crosses the point B, S2 is no longer visible to S1. So when the theta rotated by, by the line OS2, is greater than 120 degree. After that, the boy S1 cannot see S2. Now, as the omega is constant, we can use the formula theta equals, theta rotated equals omega t. So from here, we'll get the time 120 degrees. So that would be two pi by three radians divided by the omega. Now the omega is, okay, this was not in radians per second. This is in revolutions per minute. So we have to convert it. So after conversion, it will be 0.5 times two pi divided by 60. And if you solve it, you'll get the answer as 40 seconds. So after the st after starting, the boy S1 will see boy S2 till 40 seconds. After that, he crosses the 120 degree mark relative to S1 and he, and he is not visible to him anymore. So that was the solution for this problem. Let's move on to the next problem. All right, so now we're gonna solve problem number 12. So in this question, we have been given a cylindrical pipe whose radius is given to be r and it is rolling towards a frog that is sitting in the horizontal ground. So let's say the frog is sitting at this point f. So the center of the pipe is moving with a constant velocity of and to save itself the frog jumps off and passes over the pipe touching it only at the top. So it, it okay so the, it's given that the frog touches the cylinder at the top and we and the air time the air time is given to be t and it's given that the horizontal range of the jump is r. So if we take a coordinate system that is moving towards the right with a velocity v, then the cylinder would uh, appear to be at rest and the frog will appear to be moving towards the left with a velocity of v towards the cylinder. Let's say it's at point two. It appear as if the frog is moving towards the cylinder with a velocity of v. Now, it's given that the frog now uh, jumps. Now it's given that it touches the cylinder at the topmost point. So it means the, it is, so its velocity vector will be tangential to this at this point. Let's say it's going to be V dash. So it will be tangential to the cylinder at the topmost point. So now we have to talk about the time of flight. Okay. Now the thing is, uh, as, as a velocity vector, it is tangential to this cylinder. The the radius of curvature of the path followed by the frog at the topmost point will be equal to the radius of curvature of this cylinder. 
formula for radius of curvature is that is going to be v squared upon the perpendicular acceleration. The topmost point we assume the velocity to be v dash so it's going to be v dash squared divided by the perpendicular acceleration the only acceleration of the frog is going to be g downwards so it's going to be g and the radius of curvature of the cylinder is given to be r so from here we'll get the velocity at the topmost point to be square root rg the horizontal velocity of the frog it remains the horizontal velocity component remains constant and let's say relative to ground uh, this frog jumped up with a velocity of v1 at an angle alpha so the horizontal velocity in this case is going to be v1 plus v1 cos alpha plus v and as the horizontal velocity in a projectile motion remains constant this would be equal to square root of rg which is the horizontal velocity at the topmost point now another data that we can get from the diagram is that at the this is also the point of maximum height and it's at a distance of 2r from the ground so we can apply so we can say 2r equals h max and the formula for h max is going to be and the formula h max is going to be u y squared upon 2g right and the vertical velocity is going to be v1 sin alpha that squared divided by 2g we'll get the value of v1 sin alpha to be 2 square root r by g so we have gotten the vertical velocity of the projectile motion and as we know that the time of flight is simply 2 uy by g so as it only depends on the vertical velocity we'll get the time of flight of motion to be 4 root r by g and that was one of the options so now we have to find the horizontal range of the jump and also we have to keep in mind that this range is relative to ground right uh, we are currently in the frame of reference of the cylinder so we also have to go back to ground frame after finding the range in this frame okay so keeping that in mind let's now it's easy to find the range the formula for range is going to be 2 ux uh, by g and this would be now the time of flight is going to be 4 root r by g and if you multiply it with the horizontal velocity which we just calculated over here to be square root rg we'll get the time uh, we'll get the horizontal range in this frame of reference now as we need it in terms of like square root r by g i'm just gonna keep it just like this and not like multiply this term inside so this is the range keep in mind in the relative frame in the frame of reference of the cylinder so this range that we found out let's name it r dash so that is what we found out here now we have to go and uh, now how do we go back to ground frame so in ground frame all we have to do is in ground frame the only thing that will happen extra is that this frog will get drifted towards the right by an amount of v multiplied by the total time that's the only difference right so if i so r dash was towards the left this drift was towards the right so we have to subtract it right so the total range r would be simply r dash minus v times capital t so this would be r dash is 4 v multiplied by the time of flight is 4 root r by g and if i take 4 square root of r by g outside this is, uh, the term inside will be square root of r g minus v and this will be the range of the frog in the ground frame so we found out the range in this condition to be uh, this thing and which matches with the option c and d okay so in c option in d option it's claiming that there is the range greater than this particular value or is the range equal to this particular value now as we uh, know the range actually depends on the horizontal velocity right range is pretty much just the horizontal velocity multiplied by the time of flight so the time of flight is going to be fixed right because the h max we clearly like it's clearly stated in the question that the h max is going to be 2r so the time of flight because and that's how we computed the time of flight so time of flight will 100 percent be this value there is no variations in that it doesn't matter if the frog jumps from here or here the time of flight has to be the same so the only thing that is uh, varying the range and could vary the range is going to be the horizontal component of the velocity and the horizontal component of the velocity is this okay so now how did we compute the horizontal range we use the roc formula right so the trick is to think about can the radius of curvature be greater or lesser is that the question right can v dash be greater than rg that is what we have to think that is the direction in which we have to think so let's say the radius of curvature 
uh, of the frog at the topmost point is greater than uh, r so what does that mean so it means uh, the frog's path must have been something like this like this is an example in which his radius of curvature is greater it would be lesser sorry so this is a condition that i drew with green color this is a specific condition in which uh, the frog's radius of curvature is less than smaller so at the topmost point so in this case if you can see carefully if you extrapolate this extrapolate this specific case you can see the frog actually collides with the cylinder here which is not, not what we want right we don't want it to collide at any point we just want it to touch at the topmost point but if so if i say let's say if the radius of curvature of the frog at the topmost point was greater than r so a case for higher radius of curvature is something like this the more flatter the curve is at the top the higher its radius of curvature so as you can see carefully if it's greater than r if the path if the radius of curvature of the path at the topmost point if it's greater than r then as you can see it only touches the topmost point at one point but if it's less then as we can see it's colliding with the cylinder which is not possible so so this is the condition so at the topmost point this roc right this radius of curvature that we just calculated over here this must be greater than smaller so the limit on v dash is that it, it has to be greater than or equal to square root rg if the frog has to only touch the cylinder at the topmost point as a restriction on horizontal velocity is that it should be greater than or equal to rg the range would be greater than or equal to the range should be greater than or equal to this specific value where, which we just found out so the answer would be a and d option now let's discuss question number 14 so this is a problem on relative motion so we've been given two motor boats that can move with velocities 4 meter per second and 6 meter per second relative to water and they're going upstream okay so there are we have two boats boat one is moving to the boat one has a relative speed of 4 meter per second and boat two boat two has a relative speed of 6 meters per second and they're moving upstream so the river is flowing in this direction now let's continue reading the problem so when the faster boat overtakes a slower boat which means the situation is something like this now a boy is dropped from the slower boat now after lapse of a time interval both the boats turn back simultaneously and move at the same speeds relative to water as before their engines are switched off when they reach the boy again if the maximum separation between the boats is 200 meters after the boy is dropped and water flow velocity in the river is 1.5 meters per second then we have to find the distance between the places where the faster boat passes by the boy okay so these problems are done best in the reverse frame of reference so i mean it's given that the flow velocity of the river is 1.5 meters per second so we have to assume that immediately after it is uh, dropped its velocity becomes equal to the velocity of the river stream so this is an assumption we have to make so now if we solve so if we go to the reverse frame of reference uh, as we know the river is flowing towards a left with a velocity of 1.5 meter per second if we go to the reverse frame of reference now the river is at rest and the boats travel with a speed of 4 meter per second to the right and 6 meters per second to the right and the boy is at rest now so if i mark this point as some o okay so now it's given in the problem that the maximum separation between the boats is 200 meters after this instant so now clearly this uh, boat whose uh, velocity is 6 meter per second is faster than the boat whose 4 meter per second so let's say this is the condition in which um, this maximum separation becomes 200 meters 200 uh, meters so and this happens after a time t let's say so this particular distance covered by boat b will be 40 and this particular distance covered by boat b2 is 60 so the difference of it that is 60 minus 40 is 200 meters right so at so if you find the time from here it will come out to be 100 seconds so after a time of 100 seconds the separation between them is maximum and boat and boat b1 is over here and boat b2 is over here now and now they are going to reverse their velocities and now they are going to reverse their velocities we have to find the distance between the places where the faster boat passes by the boy okay so for this we have to go back to ground frame I'm redrawing this point, this plane O that I just drew earlier. And what will happen is the boy in the ground frame, it will travel to the left um, by some distance. So let's say if this point is O and finally it has reached the point O dash. So what they're asking in the problem is this distance O O dash. This is the distance that they're asking. 
Okay, so for that, all we have to do is just find the time uh, after which they meet again. So, and that is very easy to find out, right? So the boat B2, it takes time T to reach this point, And it also will take time T to come back because the, its speed is same, right? So, okay, so the boat B2, it will meet the boy after a time of 2T from the start. Okay, so, and now if we go back to ground frame, now we clearly know that the boy travels with a speed of 1.5 meters per second. In a time of 2t, what is the distance it covers? 2t multiplied by 1.5. So this distance comes out to be 300 meters, which will be the answer to our problem.